Okay, Pete, a lot of questions that come up is like, um, why does a pressure saw form? And what exactly, you know, is a pressure um, saw? Yeah, you see, in a case like um, uh, Fishon, you know, when he hurt his leg like that, uh, that's the side he was lying on all the time, and he's, he spends more time than usual lying on that side. So what happens is it actually puts pressure, the skin, and it's onto, if there's very little muscle like over that area, it's, it's um, pressure straight onto the bone. So normally you've got um, what they call a bursa, where there's a little bit of fluid here just to lubricate the tendons. So when the animal walks, that the tendons are able to, to you know, contract and relax freely. But when he lies on it, there's pressure all the time. So this bursa produces more fluid than normal. And it keeps on producing, keeps on producing, and it keeps on, and then eventually the skin at the top, because of the pressure, those little blood vessels that supply that skin die. So you've got a, a, a patch of, of a dead skin, necrotic skin, and that's where it opens to the top, and that fluid all drains that uh, way. But Fission is lying on that uh, side that's actually sore. Uh, yeah. Why does he lie on that side? Yeah, because he's got more flexibility in the, in the leg that hasn't been affected. So in his case, the, the broken leg is, is the, well, the, the leg that was broken is the left front leg. So he lies on that left side and he can use, when he gets up, he can use the right leg because it can actually bend and flex and it's less painful. So he can stand up much easier. So it actually makes sense for him to, to just lie that one side. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously he's lying more, more than usual on that side because of the pain uh, or the pain that was. It, I, in, at the moment, I don't think so. That, that you can see that pressure saw, it's mainly like scar tissue inside. There's a little bit of fluid, so I don't think he's spending that much time, but that, that um, you can call it an injury if you like, is, is going to be there, you know, it's going to be there forever because of the scar tissue. Hopefully we can get the hole to close, but if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world either. It actually doesn't look bad at all. Okay. So, I mean, we're cleaning it daily. Yeah. Is, you know, is that a, a good thing to clean it, um, you know, to get the pus out? Because we're basically yeah. worried about, you know, the pus forming and getting some maggots in there. Yeah, look, it's, it's, very, it's, it's quite a neat little hole, you know, it's very unlikely the maggots, but cleaning it out every day will be good. And, you know, apparently he's used to it, you know, we've got that little pipette now. Just stick it in there and you can just flush it every day. But it's, it's hardly, you can, you can hardly say there's even an infection in there because it's draining all the time. So it's, if, if, you, if you can put it that way, it's a nice wound. Okay. Is, is that wound painful for him? No. I don't think so. You know, maybe when they, when they flush it out, it's a, it's a little bit, you know, um, uncomfortable, but he'll get used to it. There's no pain there. Okay. Definitely not, no. Right. So it's more tender, you know. It well, it's just uncomfortable, you know, but not, it's, it'll be uncomfortable while um, they're working on it. But the rest of the time, you won't feel anything. Okay. I think we're more worried about it than what he is. Basically, why does it create the pus? Okay, so when the when the hole opens, obviously there's a and, and of course remember they go and swim in the dams a lot, eh? and the, you know the dams are not sterile the water, so you get bacteria going in there, and you know so you do get a secondary infection. But the fact that it drains like that, you know, again it's just an aesthetic thing. Uh, it looks worse than what it really is. And, so, and we don't have basically a timeline when it need you know when it will kind of heal. Or no, you know, it's, it's, it's not causing him any discomfort, so it will heal when it wants to, you know, it, um, it may never close completely, but it may as well, but it, you know, from, it's neither here nor there. If you can just keep it clean every day um, from an aesthetic point of view, but really it's, it's not a big issue. Does those heaps, you know, actually help, you know, to um, kind of reduce the, the weight, you know, that he puts on lying on that side? Yeah, definitely. Well, and also what's good is that when he lies on that heap like that, it actually presses on that thing and squeezes all the, the pus and, and stuff out. And then also by lying like that, as you say, there's less weight on that on that injury and it's also easier for him to stand up again. Okay. Um, and then just, you know, is this a common thing that we see in elephants or rhinos, you know, to have when they're injured? Yeah, one must remember that these elephants are essentially free roaming, you know, most of the day. So what you're seeing there is, is typically a wild elephant. Um, the fact that it's habituated to people uh, makes no difference to that wound at all. That wound would have occurred in the wild um, because of the exact amount of time that they do spend, uh, the extra amount of time that they spend lying on that side. So it's a, a, a totally natural phenomenon.